Hey there, welcome back to the channel. My name is Derek, this is Chocolate City Tech. As usual, if this is your first time, welcome. Uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe, like, share, help the channel grow. All right, so we got a lot of stuff uh, we've been working on. Uh, we've been mostly working on our back end. Um, today, we're finally gonna get to the front end, attach our Svelte, uh, which actually is gonna be separate. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a few minutes. Um, but that's what we're going to be working on. So let's go ahead and jump into the code. And all right, so a few things I want to cover before I even get into uh, coding is um. So currently, if you go to the GitHub, it's at Chocolate City Tech, um, and the name of the repository is just .NET 5.0 dash. Um, well, it's not 5.0. It's 5.0 dot dash spell js. What you see is that I actually open this up right when we were finished with uh, tutorial number four. Going for it just to make things a little bit easier for those either catching up or just to be able to see where things are. Uh, what I'll do is I'll create a separate branch for each um, lesson. So today we're going to actually jump into adding our Svelte um, application to our front end application to our back end. And depending on how long we get, I may I may or may not get to um, doing the authentication piece. I'm trying to keep all the videos as short as possible. Uh, I'm trying to do maybe somewhere around 30 minutes, uh, no, no more than that, because one, um, it takes a long time to put this stuff together when it's longer than you know 30 minutes, because uh, you have to go through a lot of editing, and two, uh, for the viewer, it, you know, after 30 minutes, you, you might lose your um, focus or something like that. So, also, I'm trying to um, make sure that I do a lot more of the live coding. Actually, I actually do all the live coding, but usually I speed it up just so you don't have to you know, sit here and watch me type every single piece. But I realized and from some comments and also just realized that some people just need to see as well as talk through some of the code so you can, you know, better, have a better understanding of it. So so what we're doing is we're doing a single page application and I'm just gonna go a few things uh, in case you don't know how it works, just give you a better uh, understanding of that. All right, so in a set, Typical HTTP request uh, response cycle. What you have is a request to, uh, let's say for instance, we're gonna use a browser as an example of the agent. Um, the agent here being a browser makes a request out to some site.com. Uh, this is the HTTP request. The response comes back from your server and your server sends back an HTML, right? The HTML may contain um, a script tag, it may contain a, a CSS tag and some images, right? So some images. So what will happen is that when uh, right after the HTML is received, your front end also has to make uh, additional calls, right? So the browser has to make additional calls to go and grab the index HTML, excuse me, the main.js. It has to go back and get the main.css and the main.jpg. So all of these are additional calls that have to be made, right? So that's a traditional um, server side application like um, .NET MVC or um, you know WordPress or whatever you want to call it. Um, so every single page that you go to, this is going to be the, what happens. And as you can see, this is resource intensive, right? Because every single page, you have to download every single one of these things all the time. So, and of course, it also makes your application look slow. So then came um, client side, or I should say single page applications. What single page applications do is they allow you to load the initial HTML um, uh, on one page along with the initial, well, I shouldn't say the initial, along with basically the app, entire application in JavaScript. From that point, your JavaScript just simply takes uh, over. So you can have um, your entire application, not just have, you, I can, your entire application is gonna be on the front end. That means that all your navigations, so if you need to navigate to somesite.com slash blog, that's, you're no longer gonna make a request back to the server, right? All you're doing is using JavaScript to literally swap out the views. Um, and what you might do to get data is that you may make an um, Ajax call to grab data. In this case, you may make a request to API slash blogs or something like that. And in return, your response would be some blog. And then you can use that blog to uh, effectively hydrate your 
um, your your front end. Now that solved one of the problems with the application appearing to be slow and also re, um, appearing to use a lot of resources because every page required a new request for HTML along with all the JavaScripts and all that stuff, right? However, because you also have to load your entire, um, you know, Svelte or, your, you know, React application on the front end, when your, when your JS is big, that means that it's going to take a long time to load. And because the pages are no longer uh, actually an, a new HTML, but simply being swapped out by JavaScript, when you have something like Google Crawler or some other crawlers come to your page to index it for SEO purpose, well, there's typically nothing there, right? Except some of the uh, the base of the HTML itself, but the ap application that you need for better SEO typically is not there. Uh, if ranking at the top is, is your number one concern, then definitely uh, this would be something that you want to avoid. You want to avoid a single page application. Uh, of course, if you're building this as an internal tool, then this may not really be an issue for you at all. Uh, another thing to consider too is that sometimes sharing links um, if it can lead to broken links. So that's something to also keep in mind. Um, so with server-side rendering, what happens is that the initial um, request to the server returns a HTML just like in the, um, the service side application that we talked about earlier. After the HTML returns, the HTML is not just returning HTML, it's also returning uh, code that has also been rendered on the back end. The JavaScript is not going to take over um, in the process called hydrating. So from this point, the JavaScript is then going to take over. Um, the con of this is that the process now becomes a bit more complicated. So now you've gone from just having a single page application to an application that is no longer client side, no um, server side. It's both. That means that your code runs on both the client and the server. And you have to be very careful about um, what, what you're writing on your code, right? So if you um, typically write something like window.this, uh, assuming that you're on a client side, that may not be true because you may actually be on the server side. Also, deploying is not as easy. Well, I shouldn't say it's not easy. It's, it's, it's not the same, right? So if it was just a simple client side, uh, traditional client side, traditional client side is typically a static HTML uh, with a, you know, with a script tag, right? So you can deploy that to a static site and be done. Uh, with server side rendering, you can't, you can't just do that. You have to actually have a server. Right? So in this case, what we're going to be using is Node server. So you got to have a Node server. So that's something else to keep in mind as well. All right. So now that we have our um, idea of what a uh, single page application is and what client side routing is, um, and I'll talk a bit more about this as we go through the app, uh, application. But let's turn our attention over to Sapper. All right. So what exactly is Sapper? Or apparently, Sapper is the next small thing in web development. Um, so Sapper is a, as, as it shows it here, it's a framework for building web application of all sizes. Um, all like single page applications, Sapper doesn't compromise on SEO, progressive, blah, 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 and all that stuff. So, so basically what we have here is a server side rendering application. Um, and it's so, sort of what we just talked about, not sort of, exactly what we just talked about. Um, so you might be thinking to yourself, well, why Sapper? Well, Sapper is you know, built by the same people that built uh, Svelte. So to me, it was more natural that I would just play around with Svelte um, when looking for a single page application, but also a server side rendering application as well. Now, if you know anything about the progress of this um, development, development of this is dead, right? Sapper is dead, it's not going anywhere. So you think it's just, well, why would I be starting a new application um, if the framework is dying? Well, although the application itself is dying, it's not the end yet. Uh, there's already a replacement in the works called uh, Svelte Kit. Um, and you can go ahead and you can check out this website. Um, you can check out this talk as well on um, you know YouTube. But essentially from the creator of uh, Rich Harris, of Svelte and also of you know this framework, um, Sapper is going to get replaced by Svelte Kit. Svelte Kit is not officially out yet, but if you read this and read the GitHub, 
my understanding is that the replacement, uh, which at this point is called Svelte Kit, should not be that much different from um, Sapper in terms of uh, you know the idea of it. In fact, I think it they, they mentioned that the initial um, code base was actually copied right over from uh, Sapper. So it looks like it's still going to be much the same, but obviously there'll be some changes. But what they said is that uh, migration from um, Sapper to Svelte Kit is going to be fairly straightforward. So depending on how far this series goes, we may actually end up doing that before we, um, you know, we may end up doing that if the if Svelte Kit gets released. Um, we don't know. So as far as I'm concerned, it's okay to start a new application with Sapper because I think I don't I don't believe there it's going to be so far away from Svelte Kit that you can't migrate uh, easily. So. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to um, follow the instruction they have here for building a, um, a new Sapper application. So it looks like what we need to do here is, you know, get npx. Um, if you don't have npm installed, check out one of my other videos. It's pretty straightforward. Just go ahead and install npm. So we're going to copy this and take this over to our terminal. Or if you have your VS Code open, uh, in which case I do. By the way, since we no longer need this, I'm just going to go ahead and get rid of it. And of course, I'm not going to call it that. I'm going to call it exotic rental. All right, looks like it's already here. All right, what else are we supposed to be doing? All right, so we're going to use the roll up version, so we'll just keep that. Next thing we need to do is uh, basically npm install, the usual stuff. And then do an npm run dev. All right, so let's go ahead and get that going. All right, so before we go ahead and do the npm install, you can see that I'm here in the client folder, which means I'm outside. I'm in the top level folder. So what I want to do is I want to cd into exotic. Players get some space here. Uh, now I'm going to do the npm install. And oh, I was actually fast. I was going to pause the video, but that was pretty fast. All right. So next thing we want to do is uh, npm run dev. Cool. All right. So let's go ahead and see what it looks like. All right. We have great success. Very good. Right here we can go to the blog page all right so that works all right so we already got at least one thing on the way right all right so quick explanation on how um this works and how these pieces are working so let's bring up the actually let me put it at the bottom so it's easier for you to see Bring up our network. So you see here that, um, let me refresh this page and actually let me clean this and refresh the whole page. All right. So that's the typical um, request cycle, right? You get to the index page in this case and the application um, returns to HTML. As you can see, it is the document that's returned. That's the HTML request, right? So that's the whole HTML. What you notice is that in a typical um, single page application, most of this stuff wouldn't be here. Um, when the page initially loads, there's typically nothing there, right? Because um, things just get swapped in and out. But as you can see here, one, uh, this loads, but uh, along with loading, because there's also um, requests for to fetch images, Right, there will be a request here to go and fetch. All right, so put in a preview. So these, right, that image and so on and so forth. Right, so that's the initial request. Um, now let's go ahead and go to another page, the about page, and let's go ahead and actually clear this out. So as you can see here, there is no call to go get the 
uh, HTML because HTML is already here, even though we went to the about page. Now, if you were doing a, a, a standard um, server side application, like an MVC, this will also load another page along with all the other stuff, right? So what's happened here is that um, the server has now taken, uh, excuse me, the client side has now taken over. When we make a call here to um, the blog, right? There isn't another, even though we route, there is not another uh, request here because it's already loaded. Now, there are a few things that Asphalt is doing, though, is that it is doing some prefetching and all that stuff, and we'll get to those a little bit later. But anyway, so this is making a request to actually go and grab the data ahead of time, right? By when you hover over it, which is pretty neat. Um, so anyway, so that's what that's doing. Um, let's go back and I'll show you, compare this to what happened when we move things around. So the way that Svelte works, Svelte uses what is called a file-based routing. That means that when it looks into this routes, right, if there's an index page, it's going to consider that the home page. Well, since there is a uh, an about, right, when you go to um, slash about, that's what this is going to present, this about page. When you go to blogs, now you notice that blogs looks a little bit different than the about page, even though it's also just another route. What happens here is that when you have a uh, folder, right, that fo is going to expect an index page inside that folder. So in this case, we have blog and index, and that's how it works, right? So either there's going to be an index at the root level. Uh, well, not either. There is an index at the root level that represents the initial page of your application. You can also have an about page. Um, for an example, let's go ahead and actually make a copy of this. And we're going to put it here as well. And let's just uh, paste that. And let's go ahead and rename that from about to, let's say, contact as well. And let's go ahead and change this name to actually. Let's change that to contact, save that. Of course, I didn't put a link here, so we have to um, actually go ahead and remove this. All right, so now you see here, it routes to a contact page. So that's how the routing works. Um, to just go over that one more time, just so you uh, have a good understanding of it, I'm going to use the folder version so that you can see how that also works. All right, so what we're going to do is uh, instead of having a contact here, what we're going to do is we're going to create a folder called contact. I'm going to move this contact inside of it. And I'm going to rename this into index. And just so you know, this it really has changed. And I'm actually just going to refresh the page. You see, I didn't even have to do anything. And as you can see here, that is, um, I, I really didn't even have to refresh the page because it's already there. <laughs> it, um, it reloads the page on the client side. So that's how it works. So as you can see here with the routing, you can either, um, if you have one page, you can just add it like that. If you have more than one page, you can do what we just finished doing here. Or you can put a folder and then add that in there. Uh, index page in there, uh, I mean. So those are two ways to do the routes. All right, so in here, there's also another concept that we need to understand, and it's called server routes. Uh, server routes is essentially a way for you to make HTTP um, uh, calls, uh, API calls, essentially. Um, and as long as the API calls correspond to the HTTP methods, get, post, uh, delete. In this case, because delete is a JavaScript keyword, is you have to see del, D-E-L, and put, um, those are going to work and I'll show you how that's going to work for now. I'm not actually going to skip explaining that because we're going to remove this blog and actually make our own blog request so that you can actually have a better understanding of that. Uh, other things to note, uh, there's the client.js file. You can read more about this on Sappers website. Uh, typically there's not much to, you need to do here. Um, this is how the application starts up. Um, server.js, we're going to be doing a lot of work here. We're going to update how this works. Um, but essentially, this is the the node uh, server, right? This is what serves up 
uh, our request and this is what's doing service our rendering for us template think of this as the html um, index page really this is where the application begins and this is where um, sapper fit fills in some of the things that it needs like the scripts the styles on uh, the head and things like that and of course the actual um, sapper application is um, injected here um, let's see what else um, so static this is where you keep all your static um, files specifically your um, images css and stuff like that um, what else what else should i explain here uh, this is for setting up your um, TypeScript. We're gonna, we're not gonna deal with that, so we'll leave that alone for now. And that should be pretty much it to explain uh, in terms of like the photo structure, um, things like that. So one thing I want to do is definitely make sure I, I'm gonna go back. Um, although I can actually add it here, I'm gonna make sure that my node modules is ignored. Okay. Perfect. That's already being done for me, so I don't have to do it again. All right. So you can always go back to the root folder because and also add that as well. All right. So at this point, we know that our Svelte is working. Our especially our Sapper is working. We already know our back end, you know, what it does. So we're going to make a few changes on the back end uh, so that we can actually grab. Um, so I can show you, make sure that we can connect. The reason I want to do this is because we're going to set up authentication the last thing you want to do is to put authentication in and then some things are not working and you're not sure what's not working right you're not sure if it's uh, because the authentication piece or something else so it's always best to sort of get um things connected first when you are connecting two different things and make sure that it works before you actually throw the authentication piece so we're going to head over to our um web api and make some changes all right so if you recall our web api um First thing we want to do is let's add a new controller. Let's inherit from my uh, controller base. Probably need to bring in the stuff here. Or let's, let's grab this uh, using statement right here. And for now, we are not going to actually we can bring in, but we're going to comment this out for now. So what we want to do here is really simple. What we want to do is we want to be able to connect our blogs API. Currently, um, if you look in our, bring it back up here. If you look in our Sapper, what you see is that there is a blogs. There is a index.html. What the index.html does is as soon as it loads up, it goes and does a fetch. Now, this dot fetch is very unique to uh, Sapper. What you notice that it's being called in this um, uh, script module. And script module is a code that's run both on a server side and also on a client side. So, what's happening here is uh, there's a specific uh, method called preload. And if you export preload, um what you can do is you can actually return something right some object serializable object and an object will then be, become available on the client side right so what's happening here is that it's making a call to this json uh, json uh, and that's really just this dot json here and what's happening is it's just bringing back um a list of you know um an, an array of uh, posts which in, in this case is being fetched here the way the file based writing works is that whenever there's a slog, uh, in this case, as you can see here, slog that's felt, that means that whenever there's a request for blogs, right, or my home page, home slash blogs, what's rendered is this initial index page, as I explained earlier. However, when there's a request for blog slash some log right what's happening is that that some blog is now the um parameter right so that's the slog and when something like this when svelte sees this what it's going to do is going to look for um something of 
of this nature, right? Something with this um, square bracket. In this case, it's going to be this square bracket. So what we have happening here is this almost the same thing that happens in the index.json, uh, excuse me, in the index.svelte. There's a script module tag and there's a regular uh, script tag. This is the one that's run both on server side and client side. As soon as it preloads, the first thing it does is it's going to look for on the uh, object here that's returned, there's a pages and there's a session, right? On the page object, or exist a parameter or params uh, object. When that params object also contains a the slug. So what's happening here is that it's doing a call to params. It's getting the slug. In this case, the slug that I just showed you from the index would be some blog, right? So what you have here then is essentially whatever the URL is, you know, I'll call that home, just call it um, some URL blogs, some blogs. In this case, some blogs would be re replacing this param that slug, right? And what is this gonna do? It's gonna look for, because this is a fetch, this dot fetch, this is going to look for a route, a uh, server route. In this case, the server route that matches it, blogs slug json is blogs slug dot json and it's passing in um obviously this part here right so that's gonna go here that's gonna go to a get method which then essentially looks for the slug that's you know being requested it's grabbing the slug over the request method here the slug is params right um, because there's a node essentially there's a node uh, object here um, a node as you say a node request object uh, gets the slug calls this method that's sort of built in here looks for and just you know looks for it and then returns uh, um, excuse me not return it creates a, a status code 200 and then actually does the return uh, if you're not familiar with um node request cycle usually well not usually you have to either return or do a nest um or do an error uh, but in this case here yeah. so it will it will return this object and uh, everything will die if not if it doesn't find then it's going to uh, set a status code to 404 um not found All right so that's the that's the request cycle in a nutshell um, but what we have here is essentially a hard coded list of um, posts, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to move this into the back end so that we can connect that and make sure it works. If that's working, that means we already, you know, ahead of the game. Uh, we know that our uh, front end can connect to our back end, and that's one of the primary um, things to do for this video. All right, so I want to make sure this video doesn't get too long. As I mentioned, I want to make sure these videos are about half an hour, not not more than that. So let's jump into the back end and let's um, grab this information and take it to the back. So what I'm going to do is um, probably put it right to the side here and move my this code a little bit here because I'm going to need to have that, a little bit of that. Perfect. So we have our blogs controller. Um, blogs controller is going to be really, really simple. It's simply a controller. Uh, right now, it's not authorized yet. Um, what we want to do is we want to have a few methods. So let's do a HTTP GET method. So public. And let's just return I enumerable of something. Um, let's actually go, because this isn't really going to be, um, I'm not going to use this for anything at all. I'm just going to create a C sharp uh, record object. So, um, yeah, public. Do I even make it public? Should, be, should I make it in a, eh, whatever. Okay. Uh, log. And looking on the right side here, it looks like we need a uh, title. We need a another string, call that um, slug. And another string, call that HTML. Really, that's all we need. 
So let's come back here and we will say that we need an inum of blogs. We call this a get method since and this just returns all of them. Um let's create a fake um list here just to return that. So let's call this private uh read only innumerable of blog and let's call it um oh, blocks across new list of blog put that down and just new blog uh title let's copy that here uh, what is sapper sure what is sapper what else we need? We need a uh, slug. Slug is what is sapper. And we need the string of our HTML. Copy all of that. What's it complain about? Okay, it looks like it's actually good. All right, so what we'll do here is just return, obviously. Return blogs. No? That's just a property, all right. So that's as yeah, simple as that. Uh, we don't need to do anything else beyond that. Um, just so we can have more than one to play with, let's uh, do another one. So. Copy this whole yep. new blog. Uh, once again, title How to Use Sapper. Nice. Uh, slug How to Use Sapper. Let's get the string for that. I'm sure this one's going to be funky because I'm seeing. Um, some HTML strings in there, so. Fold this over a little bit, take a look at it. Which let me do the screen a little bit so I can see most of it. Uh, oh yeah, cause it's got this double. Um, this JavaScript here would just make this, simplify my life instead of trying to format it properly. Now nah, it should be good enough. Uh, you know what? Let's do one more. Why not? So a new blog. Again, title. How <laughs> is different from Next JS? That's a good question. Slug. How is Sapper different? And lastly, let's get the Oh, I'm surprised. That works just fine. Sweet. All right. Let's hide this code somewhere in the back. <laughs> All right, that's good. All right. So other thing we want to do is we also want to have another get. Um, so in this case, this get actually um, needs a route so that it can return. So we just call this slug. And um, public blog. So get why not? Uh, so in this case, it actually takes a string cost load, and all we need to do is just return slug dot. Oh, come on, tell us, don't fail me now. Blogs dot first the default. Oh. The first to default, I may not have a link, system down link, of course. First to default, um, be that 
slug. My strength be that slug. Equal slug. Sweet. All right, so that's all we need for uh, for now over here. Now, before we go to the back to the front end, um, there's a few things we need to ensure are good to go. Uh, we need to make sure that our, we have set up cores. We have set up cores, add cores, lightning header, allow these to be exposed, allow any method with origin uh, 4001. Actually, that's not going to be, now that we know our, we put this in earlier when we were just playing around. My spelt is being served on Locos 3000, and it's not going to be HTTPS. With that being said, that means we need to comment out this portion uh, because we're not going to be using the HTTPS redirection right now. Uh, what else do we need to ensure our work in here? The other thing we may want to do also is that eventually when we do add the credentials piece, so let's just add that in right now. I think that should cover us for the API end right now. All right, let's head on back to our Svelte application. So now that we are back on our Svelte application, the first thing we want to do is we want to head to our index. So we're no longer going to be fetching from here. For now, I'm going to comment this code out. I'm usually not a fan of commenting code and leaving them, but just for reference for anyone who may be looking at this later on in the future, I'll just comment it now and leave it. So I explained before what the spell does is it passes a page and a session. And don't worry, we'll be, we'll be getting to sessions and all that stuff when we start doing um, authentication. Um, what we want to do is we want to actually make a call to our backend that we just created, right? So, uh, this is not an async, let's make it async. And eventually I'm actually gonna pass um, the API endpoint in over here through the session, but for now we're just hard coded. Uh, let's go constant API route equals, oh, not too many equals there, buddy. HTTP uh, local host. Uh, port 55000, let's go API, and I guess I'm only going to use it for blogs right now, so I might as well just add blogs into it. Uh, oh, that's strange. A little tab before my, my semicolon. Okay, anyway, um, constant response equals uh, awaits this dot fetch API route and it doesn't really mean anything because it's just just gonna be a get method there so that's fine uh constant close equals await uh, response come on all right, so we're going to be making an API call to our, uh, when this page loads, it's going to make a request out to API blogs, and then uh, it's going to, um, well, yeah, do a fetch to API.blogs, which as we just saw, and then uh, it's going to return that, and we're going to await that into a JSON, and then what we're going to do is return post. And I should just be able to just, nope, just know this not props. <laughs> this is not a, oh, by the way, one thing I should also mention too, um, if you don't have a Svelte, I probably should have mentioned this way, way earlier. So there's an extension for Svelte, for VS Code. If you don't have that installed, make sure you get that. Um, yeah, should have mentioned that. All right, so we go ahead and return post, and that's what we need here. So I mentioned before, since post is already being called here, we don't need to actually do anything here at all. Um, everything is already set up for us here. So, uh, so let's make sure this works before we have to move on to making any changes anywhere at all. Uh, so let's go ahead and turn on our um, API, make sure the API is running. Go ahead and build that. Launch it, actually. Oh, there were build errors. Do you want to continue? No. Show me what the build errors are. Ah, 
forecast. I'm wondering that I already let's actually go ahead and clean this up and delete this because we don't need this at all. Gone. Let's build, make sure there are no build hours. Run this again. That was very strange. All right. You remember our swagger. Uh, let's make sure that the non HTTPS is also working. So that's going to be at 5,000. And move that. Perfect. So that's also working. So we can go ahead and, and hey, look, blogs. Try it out. Sure. Look at that. All right, so we know it's working on Swagger. So in theory, it should work just fine when we go to. Actually, let's make sure we can actually request it with the slug. Uh, let's nest. Let's uh, <clears throat> go ahead and fold this one in. Blogs. I want blog with a slug. Try it out. Place that with a slug name. Execute. And that returns. So in theory, everything should be working. Our API is working. Let's just make sure API also works with our spelt application, right? All right, says it's up. Let's go take a look at it. Great success. Blog. Oh, something happened. What's wrong? Let's look in here. 404 and then 500. All right, so our application made a call to localhost 5000 um, slash API slash blogs, and for whatever reason, it didn't work. Uh, it said it doesn't exist, All right? So let's go find out why that was the case. Well, it looks like from looking at here, I can see that it made a request to HTTP localhost port 3000 and then slash localhost. So that means that we didn't put a, um, um, uh, the route that we gave it is incorrect. So let's go make sure we can fix that. Ah, there you go. So usually after HTTP colon, there should be a slash slash. <laughs> if you're watching this, you probably saw this earlier, maybe, but you didn't say anything, did you? You just watched me make the mistake. All right, let's bring it back up. And let's go to blogs. Hey, look at that. Nah, the last thing to see is uh, check on this, make sure that it actually worked. And look at that, URL is not defined. Because remember, we were playing around and I switched it over for that. So let's go ahead and fix that. So blogs and remove that. And instead bring in rams that slug. Now, what you notice is that this is also still using the old method, right? Where it goes to blogs and then it goes to um, slug.json. But we no longer use that JSON at all right now, right? So what I'm gonna do is I'm also gonna do the same thing I did before. I'm gonna comment out, parse it as code so that you can essentially look at it later if you wanted to. So I'll go ahead and uh, make a copy of this and comment this part out. All right, so we no longer go in here, as you remember. And in fact, we can go back and steal this um, API. So that's API route equals and we can still do the same thing here, API route. Out, slash we already got the blogs part so slash uh, slug which is params dot slug and that's a lowercase g lowercase s and for the most part everything else should be the same <clears throat> excuse me because we no longer go into the JSON which is here the JSON right all we're doing is going to an actual API route so API API slug so let's go ahead and refresh this page. Hey, look at that. All right, so we have that blogs. Um, let's see if the API routes is working. All right, uh, let's check out network. Sapper, as you can see here, the request was made out to uh, HTTP local is 5,000. 
and that's how we got our blog. All right, so we know that everything is working. All right, so that's that's pretty much gonna conclude. Um, I think what we need to do for today. When we meet up again, we're gonna do the authentication piece. So usually, if you have any questions, just drop them. I uh, usually get back to people that make comments. So if you have any comments or suggestions, just hit me up. Um, you know, I'm usually uh, pretty responsive. As always, don't forget to subscribe, like, share, all that kind of stuff. Um, if this is too short for you and you want it to be a little bit longer, let me know. All right, that'll do it. Peace.